Yeah, imagine now we were talking earlier about about the parents and about uh, so the major thing that we face in our business is is educating parents in sports, Absolutely. not kids. Kids they, they will follow you. They're the coach is there, and he will tell them this is the way to train. This is the right way to to play, and and you should focus this in your lifestyle. And if they love football, they will start doing it with no issues. And and you know it's like school, but the parents are the problem. You know, they will come and start complaining about the weights of the kids. And then we tell them what's in the fridge of the house. Yeah. Pepsi and cola. And, and I love and, that. You know, I love that. I love that. Food the problem and, is the school, not at home. <laughs> <laughs> and all of this uh, food, uh, junk food. And, and, you know, he have to, you know, have this frappuccino at the weekend. He'll eat McDonald's and, and then he, he cannot run. And, so, and then they come blame, uh, you know, you should train them more. You should give them more fitness uh, classes. I think the best way of solving it is having two leagues. Two? Two leagues. Two leagues. One with drugs, one without. One with drugs, one without. <laughs> and and yeah. it, right? And if you if you take drugs and then without then, then you're banned permanently. If you take drugs, you can take whatever the hell yeah. you want. <laughs> Just go to the and go to the extreme. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe I, why not? Right? I, yeah, but yeah. I remember reading somewhere, I think it was in the Economist, and I don't know why the Economist of all magazines were writing it, saying given an given an option given an option. To, to Olympic athletes, if they would be willing to trade their entire lifespan to win an, their Olympic medal, 90 something percent of them said yes. So, mm. that's very interesting. Right? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. if you're so obsessed by it and you want to be number one, then what the hell? Go for it. I don't yeah, care. Exactly. No, it's sometimes people would go extremes. Mm. Uh, to reach what they want in, in any way, in any industry. Mm. So sports is not an exception. You know, a lot of them will go extremes to reach, to to win, to achieve. But but it's, uh, you have to keep it uh, genuine. You have to keep it l- real to really feel the success, you know, to Absolutely. really uh, have it prop- the proper way. And I think that's the best way, even the feeling. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And, and and now going from the drugs sector of how, how sadly sports are a lot of it affected. What do you think about uh, match fixing? That's another issue. Right? I yeah, mean, it yeah, sucks, yeah. right? Yeah, it is. It is. That's another another issue. But I think it's, um, I don't think it's as much affected now. It's, it's in the past, maybe yes, more. But now I think there is more control. Didn't the World oh. Cup, didn't they just get into trouble like a few years ago? <laughs> the World Cup? Yeah, they got in trouble for like briberies and stuff like that. Getting uh, the World Cup. It, was it? Uh, get- that's a different thing. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it was, yeah, 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 yeah. I think they had trouble with Russia or something like that, right? That they were getting loads of money from them to, to make sure that the next match would be held in Russia or something along yeah. those lines. Oh, well, that's really a big story to talk about. <laughs> You're getting worried. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because it's coming now in Qatar in 2020. Uh, I mean, November. In yeah, South of Qatar. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. There's, there's a lot of stories about that. So do you think, do you think it's very political, very political. Do you See, think, even even in, if you come to the lowest level of, of academies in Bahrain and Saudi and whatever, mm. still there is politics in the in, in the, the so imagine at the World Cup level. Of course. It's countries and, and, and economics and money and, and visas and that's crazy. Of course. It's crazy. Is, is Qatar the first Gulf country that will have the, all the World Middle Cup? East? All Middle East. Right? I yeah, think yeah, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It is. I'm surprised they got it to Qatar and not Saudi Arabia or Dubai, but well, that's its own animal, right? Mm. <laughs> it's a big question mark. <laughs> no, I just bought tickets. I want to go there. You know? Oh, right. <laughs> Don't no, worry. No we can comment. edit this start out. Don't worry. <laughs> Yeah, it's the first World Cup I'll go attend. So uh, oh, congratulations! Yeah, Are you looking forward you. to it? Are you... Oh yeah, man! I, I wanted to go to Russia, but I, I didn't have chance. Oh, but uh, hopefully this one, yes. Definitely. Have you ever been to Russia, by the way? No, I really want to go. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for things to settle, and then you definitely. should go. You should go. You should go now. Now yeah. it's going to be cheap. It is, but you know, you're gonna ban ban the you know flights. Well, and they're, they're not gonna, gonna ban stuff, Bahrainis. Yeah. They're not gonna ban Saudis. Yeah, I don't know. You know, it's, maybe they close the airport just. Something will happen. I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm tempted to go just to try like their fake brands, <laughs> the right? McDonald's, the new McDonald's, the new McDonald's, <laughs> and the new Starbucks. They called it Duck Coffee or something yeah. like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there, uh, a lot of people went there, especially in the World Cup. 
they really love it. They say it's an advanced country. It's beautiful. I don't know if you've been there. I've been. Yeah. I've been to uh, Moscow and St. Petersburg. Wow. And it is honestly, without a shadow of a doubt, one of the most beautiful countries I've been. It was a wonderful time. The music there is all 80s. Oh. Which is weird. Like every cab you get You're into, <laughs> it's like going back in time. Yeah. It's amazing. Um, all the women are either beautiful or ugly. There's no okay, like in yeah. between. No in between, yeah. Um, all the guys are either like monsters or they're fat and there's no in between. <laughs> Right, either they look like yeah. a thug or they're fat, and they're probably the boss of the thug. Right, <laughs> <laughs> so it's it was it was an amazing amazing time, and and uh, I I would definitely 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 go back in a heartbeat. See, uh, going back to sports, mm. I think the World Cup uh, being in Russia really opened the eyes of people, because you know we always see movies and 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 uh, Russia, Western influences. Yeah, well, Russia is the the mob, the mafia, the the bad guys. It's always that that way. So we thought this country is not good to visit, but when the World Cup happened and people went there, it changed their view. And now we see a lot of people supporting Russia. Even the war, they don't know what's happening, but no, Russia is a good country now. So that's that's one of the things that will happen after the World Cup here in the region. Absolutely, you know, absolutely. People absolutely. visiting us, looking at our culture, uh, seeing the beauty of Arabia, the beauty of our religion, and all of that, and then things might change. And and this well, that's the problem, right? Since like what? Since two thousand and one, we've been the villains. In, exactly. In, <laughs> in almost, especially the both of us. And the World Cup will help us. <laughs> absolutely. Being bold and having a little beard, that's yeah. already you know right. <laughs> But it was yeah. weird. Even in the early '80s and '90s, we, it, it wasn't so much that the that that typical Arabs were the villains. It was always the 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 the, the extremists. Uh, not so much the extremists. It was always um, uh, the uh, they always portrayed Iranians as you know, like mm. always uh, like shady. Yeah. You know, and depending man on, on, on what they think, what they want. You know, exactly. Yeah, they will shape it the way they want. Exactly. Uh, so finish from the Iranians. The Iranians are friends now. The Arabs are not friends, and then they will, all the movies will change, change and all the exactly. villains, and yeah. Well, that's happened with China, right? So, so Hollywood now has become so bent over by China that they have to change scripts mm. in order to satisfy China. Chinese, yeah, yeah. Or are they gonna close the factories and? Oh, not so much they close <laughs> the factories. They just won't allow your movie to be played in the cinema. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. and China only allows I think twelve movies a a year, mm. and in order to 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 be played in China, you have to have a Chinese actor in the movie. Wow. And it has to have positive messages about China. Wow. So Influence. It, absolutely. Influence. If you remember the movie, um, Dan, maybe you remember it. It's like that guy where he gets stuck on Mars. Uh, Matt David? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so not yeah. interstellar. There's a Chinese uh, scientist maybe. In it. It's not just China a scientist. They, they, like in the movie script, like they say, we have to call in our friends of China to help solve this problem. Oh. China saved us. <laughs> it was bizarre. Wow. It was so bizarre. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. A superhero, yeah. Oh, in Marvel. Yeah. Which one is it? Uh, the... Yeah, that's the one. Which one? The one with the Doctor uh, Strange? No, no, the one with the rings. He has got like rings. It wasn't very good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we don't remember it. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Because I love Marvel and uh, DC and, and oh, yeah? superheroes. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your favorite movie from, from that franchise? Since, oh. you've, you, since you've put yourself out there now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like Batman overall. Really? Uh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Batman, Spider Man. Okay. You yeah. like Spider Man? Yeah, the, see, I, I, this it's a personality. You have the fun part, and you have the serious okay. uh, doing the job part. So, okay. So, Batman is is when I'm in the boss in my in my work. Okay. <laughs> Spider Man with my friends and family. Really? Yeah. It's, because uh, I find Spider Man such a dweeb. He lives with his like he's always stuck yeah. living with his aunt. <laughs> he's enjoying life, and you know, and he, swinging around. <laughs> he never graduates from high school. He's like <laughs> <laughs> he's always stuck in this age, you know? Yeah. <laughs> You know, at least with Batman, he's like at least a grown adult. He's got some money. You know, he's he's working. He's doing things. You yeah, know? yeah. No, I look at the at the at the fun part of it. All you right, know? you don't look at it too realistically. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I and I love to have fun in my work. Uh, mm. I left uh, the corporate life to focus on my uh, to open a business that is fun. If you come now to Winners, my business, and uh, you'll see all most of the most of our employees are young. Very few uh, in their late 30s, 
30s, 40s, with the experienced one, which I really need. But the majority are young. They are cheerful. Ambitious. Ambitious, uh, very positive. You'll, be, you'll see smiles, even the workers, even the cleaners. Uh, they are friends. For example, if we go play football as a team, even the cleaners will play with us. Uh, so it's, this is this is the environment I like that I yeah. wanted to create. So this is the Spider-Man part. So, so you have to be the Batman, and be like, <laughs> get back to cleaning. Exactly. I said we're done. Yeah. You know, you put the cape in. <laughs> you have to. You have to mix. Uh, you know, we saw Google and 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 uh, all of this. Uh, uh, what do you call it? The, the iPhone, uh, Steve Jobs, and the way they changed the work environment, and we're still stuck in the, you know, punching in, punching out. So uh, uh, my dad told me when he when he left uh, in the 1970s, uh, end of the late 70s, he left Shell to go back to Saudi. He said he was he he was so shocked in finding that he worked at the time at 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 Hadid or Sadaf Sadaf. That company obviously doesn't exist yeah. anymore. Mm. And I think Hadid still exists to some capacity. And everything was done on paper and pencil. Mm. Everything in the entire yeah. chain of command, all of it. And and I remember my, my dad was telling me stories saying like, I couldn't, I, I went from like, a, like seeing everything being done by computers, automation, yeah. to it felt like going back in the past. I, I believe that, definitely. I, I worked my whole life in private sector. Mm. And then uh, when Corona hit, uh, I had to close my business for six months, Oof. you know, so I had to take a job, not in the private sector, in the other sector. Sure. So, and I saw this, man, 2021, 2022, uh, 2021, I think it was, and I saw this, and it's a disaster. It's, now, it's, it's going back ages. Now, now, looking back on it now, do you, do you think, it, do you think not the whole world overreacted? About? Looking back on it now? The whole COVID response? Yeah, I'm, I'm one of the people who yeah, he lived my life. I yeah. enjoyed every part of it. Yeah. You know, I, 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 there are a lot of people, you know. They, we still have people come on, by the way, on the show who still wear masks. Yeah. And <laughs> no, but I mean, th there are people who died from it. And this is a fact for me. I, sure. I saw people. Sure. I'm, I'm very sorry for that. Sure. But it didn't stop me personally. So when the cycling... You know, the bicycles uh, yeah. trend, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I was out there when uh, whatever was there. Rollerblading, you were out roll, rollerblading. Yeah, yeah, I was going out and trying to live my life. I avoided going to my parents and then yeah, any older people just for them to be to feel Safe. better, you know. Uh, but I was going around and, and I didn't care, to be honest. I mean, again, it, it's 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 such a difficult thing because it's going to take years and years of, of figuring it out exactly what in the end happened. Yeah. Rather or not, because most remember most of the people that 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 died were on the elderly, and let's be if we face facts, you know these people were anyway on their way to die, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. There, there wasn't. I mean, there there was a scaremongering and like it's affecting children, it's affecting adults. Mm. It really wasn't so much that. Yeah, I and mean, I think and I think now it's things are more clear because you see again the political influence again. That these a lot of stories and, and conspiracy theories and why and when and how and, and China and US and that's you see a lot of them when you read start reading about these these things and seeing these things it's, it's become more clear you know um, it was it was a virus for me that what I saw that affected people whatever other illness they had it went came out I, I could say this for a fact Boris Johnson Prime Minister of of the UK had to resign because of his handling of the situation of COVID. Mm. He gave the contract because of Wasta mm. to his to the the his wife's friend mm. for face masks. Ah. Right, no competing, no bids. Yeah. Right, and it turned out that the health minister in the UK had injury to to insult made political decisions about face masks and stuff like that because mm. he was getting <laughs> so, so, so obvious so obvious a lot of people took advantage a lot of people it showed you who even even uh, like uh, as simple as uh, stopping the rent if you if you have an apartment or whatever or a business mm. just wait for a couple of months and and they will took, take advantage if you can pay it's as simple as this every single person it, it showed the real people you know even the friends I have one of my friends, he told me, uh, I go out with people, with friends, you know, and, and everything. And when, when Corona hit, the people who picked up the phone 
calling, asking about me. How are you? We didn't see you for a long time. Hope you're fine is the real friends. Mm. You know, so it really everyone else just wanted to have a free every, dinner. Exactly. Everyone else just went in his way, not caring about others and just focusing on his private life, whatever. Yani. So it really, it, I think it's like clean the, the world, you know? Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I think there's, there's positives and negatives with everything like that. I think there's a lot of people who, who, who kind of got obsessed with working from home, right? Yeah. And I think there's, there's a rude wake up call going mm. to happen to them where they're like, listen, son, that ain't going to happen, right? <laughs> right. Forget about you it. You can if enjoy you, it when you're sick and then just ex- exactly. pick up yourself. We want, we want you back in the office. And if you can't make it, then try to look for a new job. Yeah. <laughs> I, right. I think there's, there's, there's some truth to that. Yeah. And I think another factor to it, which is the other side of the coin, a lot of people realize that most of their friendships were actually their colleagues. Mm. Right, especially mm. in Western countries and stuff like that, yeah. where they don't have a lot of interactions. Yeah, they don't yeah, yeah, yeah. Know their it's cousins. very lonely out there. Yeah, it's very lonely. I always I read something about Sweden that uh, some people die in their apartment and and they find out after two to three years. That's impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine if they if they lived with a dog. That dog ate that. Por- <laughs> <laughs> ate, that ate the front and back. They're they're gone. Yeah. There's no bones left. Yeah, it's different. Here we're, we're, we're blessed with our culture. We're blessed with, with this community. For now, for, for now. Don't you, don't you feel like, I mean, especially with the younger generation, that it's it's becoming more and more westernized. I mean, less and less people spend yeah. time with their cousins and brothers. It, it's, it's happening. It's happening, definitely. Uh, I find difficulties to feed, to to uh, to sit with my parents now because they're, they're uh, afraid. You know, you're going to Saudi, you're coming, uh, no, you wait for a week and, you know, it's, it's really affecting. That's what I always think about it, right? I think يعني, if Allah يعني, wants to take you, then خلاص, يعني, yeah. يعني, okay, you can, you can prevent it. This is like somebody who says to me, you know, I, I, I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't do this, I don't do that because I, I want to make sure I don't get cancer. But yeah, you know, but Habibi, anyway. <laughs> this is not up to your decision. Uh, you know what Al Pacino said? Hmm. Uh, he said, uh, "You're gonna die anyway. Yeah. So just enjoy life. Do whatever you like. Absolutely. You know. <laughs> so <laughs> you only have one go at it. So. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You, you have to be careful. You have to to make sure. Like for example, I I I work out to stay healthy, not hmm. to, not to have the six packs or whatever. Just to stay healthy because I want to enjoy life. And for the girls, of course. You know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. No comment. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, because no, but the main reason I really want to enjoy life. I want to go camping. I want to go mountain climbing. There's a lot of things I didn't do yet. I want to do, I don't want to reach my 50s and 60s and I cannot walk and people helping me. This is my main reason of working out. Mm. You know, I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. I, 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 but it's also, it's, it's, it's also changed so much in in the last two generations i mean i i can almost guarantee it at least from from my perspective my my father doesn't give a shit about his health and i would be very surprised <laughs> if you tell me that your dad goes out and worries about bench pressing and no, no no not to this extent but definitely my father is uh, like he used to work in the ministry of health mm. so you know all the, the right food and and you'll see his section in the, in the fridge with the right uh, food and drugs and stuff and, and oh fantastic he yeah. actually that's one of the few who actually like <laughs> he takes care he, of himself yeah, he, yeah. he he practices what he preaches that's yeah. really good <laughs> yeah and he advised the right way you know you take this in the in the middle of the day you take this before workout you, do, you don't he don't like sports okay but but he eats healthy and he's taking care of himself so at least he's going out walking at least at doing least something. yeah at least yeah 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 yeah, I mean, it's crazy to think about that. That less than twenty years ago, exercise was like something you'd be like, "What?" You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It was only for the fanatics. I was shocked when when I used to study in the, in the states and Canada. A lot of my GCC friends, like Emiratis, Saudis, uh, they would say that it's 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 aib, it's it's not uh, polite. I don't know. It's not sure. uh, no, it's polite, not, uh, right not, way. It's not the right way to wear shorts and start running outside. Hey. You're not a kid. Hey. You know, That's or, or, or to play football. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, one of the guys told me if I play football, my my dad will will you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Will break uh, my back. So I was like, what's wrong with these people? Yani, this is sports. And now it start changing when you know all the sheikhs and all the like Hazza and, mm. and all of this. And I mean Hamdan bin Hamdan Rashid and get on get onto sports. 
people started following them. It's it's weird to think about it that 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 it was aim to go and play in sports, but it was perfectly okay to to be in the Jewish military and do exercises. That that it's it's mm. weird to me that <laughs> that caught to me yeah, between it the had two. Had to be a profession, otherwise just <laughs> exactly wear your thob and stay. You know, it's weird, right? <laughs> And, and yeah. you couldn't build up to be a professional. Either you are a professional or you're not. Or not. Or yeah. Not. Is it either it's natural or just uh, stay the way you are? Isn't that interesting? And yeah. how, like, how these things came about? Yeah. Imagine now we were talking earlier about, about the parents and about. Uh, so the major thing that we face in our business is, is educating parents in sports, Absolutely. not kids. Kids, they, they will follow you. They're the coach is there. And he will tell them this is the way to train, this is the right way to to play, and and you should focus this on your lifestyle. And if they love football, they will start doing it with no issues. And and you know it's like school, but the parents are the problem. You know they will come and start complaining about the weights of the kids, and then we tell them what's in the fridge of the house: yeah. Pepsi and cola and. and I love that. Know, I love that. I love that. The and, problem is the school, not at home. <laughs> <laughs> and all of this uh, food, uh, junk food, and and you know he have to you know have this frappuccino at the weekend. He'll eat McDonald's and and then he, he cannot run. And so and then they can blame uh, you know you should train them more. You should give them more fitness uh, classes. <laughs> but yeah. this is this is a weird thing that I find with a, with a lot of like gym guys is that is this weird mentality of sitting eight hours down and then exercising for an hour and a half or two. That mm. doesn't work, right? You have to no. build exercise throughout your day yeah. and making sure you're in motion, that you're doing things. See, it's it's exercising and, and workout. And it's again, it's a really reached an advanced stage. Now you can shape your body the way you want. Of course. You know, you can do what it's not about being like um, the, the bodybuilder uh, way when, when Arnold Schwarzenegger the, yeah exactly in the 80s and, and 90s this was like the old, this is this is fitness mm. you know you have to be buffed and all muscles now it's they have this beach body and you have the uh, swimsuit body swimsuit body and uh, you know so you have a lot of things and you can reach these things doing the right uh, training the right way it, it, isn't it incredible to think about that Arnold Schwarzenegger eight time or six time um uh, 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 Mr. What were they? What were they called? Uh, uh, yeah. uh, not Mr. Olympia. I think it was. Was it called Mr. Olympia? The, the award. I think it might have been. Now, if he would compete today, he wouldn't even qualify. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? He would yeah. barely qualify for the swimsuit edition. Exactly. It's different. Different stage. Yeah. You know, I, I, my, one of my coaches, uh, fitness coach, uh, in, in winners we have a fitness center at the top. It's, it's based on classes. Okay. So ladies, men, and you, sub, uh, you uh, have a membership and you come per class. Okay. So one of the coaches there, he trains me uh, personally. Okay. So he doesn't ter- train me there. He I t- love, by the way, how you sneak that in. I love that. <laughs> 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 Tell me more about your business. I love this. <laughs> <laughs> you have to walk. <laughs> hey, come on. I love it. <laughs> yeah. So he takes me to uh, a uh, traditional uh, gym where have you have all the equipments. We have everything but free weights. Okay. So... And then I play football in the weekends. I play paddle and he gets angry. He's telling me, I work so hard with you to build the muscle and to, to shape your body in a certain way. And this is basically building something and you go and destroy it with playing football. Okay. So football, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Uh, the science and, and the knowledge of, of fitness and sports have really reached a high level. Mm. So if you want to stay in the right shape, you cannot be running and playing football uh, because football have this explosive uh, run they call it or energy where you will go to the ball very fast and this will use a lot of muscle short twitch muscles yeah yeah and this will dis- not destroy but uh, يعني, atrophy I, I don't know the word exactly yeah. but basically the muscle that you're building on throughout the week it's soreness you'll have yeah. soreness electric acid build up in your muscles yeah which then makes you sore so to walk. you have to uh, if you if you want to, if you have a target of a certain shape sure yeah you have to make sure not to affect it by other sports but if you want to be a football player in shape that's a different story but don't you feel like your trainer should should build that into his program like if he knows he should. That, and and he's you're... doing this with me now. He's telling me, when are you going to play football? Okay. You know, I'm telling him on Thursday. Okay, so I'll, I'll do this. I'll change my program for you. Okay. And on Wednesday, I, I, on Thursday, whatever day you're going to play, you have to do this, this, this before training. 
before playing and this 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 before after training okay and playing and this is what you have to eat and this is what you have to drink how much i don't stick to all of that you know <laughs> how much does this take up in your life by the way every day uh, i try my best it's can, too difficult can you give me an give me an idea how much is, how much are we talking about how much a time investment per day we're talking about to Maybe. fulfill all these objectives that you're that your trainer's putting on you two hours three two hours, hours a day. hours yeah two hours three okay two hours three and i'm lucky that I my business is in sports. You sure. Know? So I go up. If I if I miss my morning training, I catch up. I catch up in the evening, but my problem is the, the stress and of, laziness of business, laziness, food, our yeah. our culture and lifestyle of food here. When you put the match boost in front of you or the biha, طبعًا. what are you gonna do? Pepsi, you know? whatever. Exactly, and the Pepsi next to it. You cannot comp- You know. Yeah, eat exactly. It. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with yeah. you. Yeah. So. So it's it's the, the lifestyle here, the culture here. Uh, when you put it with sports, it's difficult. You can you can do whatever you want, especially the youngers. Now uh, I, I know a lot of kids in our academy. They really know what to eat. They're, you'll see them with six packs, uh, buffed muscles, and they play football properly uh, because they are yeah. they are they are strict. Sure. In a young age. Sure. So these th- these guys will have. Would you future. want to live your life that way though? Depends. Some of them enjoy it. Being below eight percent body fat <laughs> is a lot of work, right? It Unless is. you have good genetics, and yeah, it's it a is. lot of fucking work. It is. No, but but see, for these guys, for for our players that are really focused this way, when they achieve in, on the field, you know, they get all the attention of girls in the school. They they are the, the bullshit, the, the hero. Bullshit! <laughs> I don't believe that for a second. No, they do. You they know do. what? This is why I'm calling bullshit because I have a friend of mine in the UK and he won um, the the bodybuilding card. You know, you, you win a bodybuilding card, which allows you then to compete okay. f- for national for your country at Mr. Olympia. Uh. So he won it. And I was like saying, so you must be getting like tons of attention from girls and stuff like that. And he looked at me. I, like, I don't have time. You wish. He looked at me and he was like, girls. The only, guy, the only people who care about the way I look is dudes. <laughs> <laughs> he still have to go. <laughs> he he have said, to change his life now. <laughs> exactly. He said that's the only people who care. Yeah. When I have a six pack or not, the girls don't give a shit because they get intimidated. <laughs> and it's just dudes. <laughs> no, no, no. For these guys, I, I've seen it. I've seen it. They come, they cheer them up. Uh, we, we train at the American University, Bah sure. uh, Bahrain, the new one. Sure. We, we created the team, the football team there, and we're training them. And we see them, how, how they're supporting each other and all of that. And we saw the we saw the confidence of these play of the, the kids there. We took the team, and some of them never played football before, just just for fun, never proper football. So when they got developed, we saw the confidence in them. You know, they were really happy. The, the, even the the grades become better because they they had a goal. Hmm. You know, I am training this much every week. I have a goal. I want to reach this this stage. So it has a lot of positive impact. Can I throw a wild idea at you and see if it would work? Hmm. What do you think of, of of introducing cheerleaders to the football matches? Do you think that would be something possible in our culture? Maybe, maybe with restrictions with with abaya or something, or maybe head covering. <laughs> I don't know. And, and then cheerleaders <laughs> will, will not work. You well, know? I don't know. <laughs> we can figure it out. Their face and, um, maybe uh, for the match. No, I believe I believe that uh, the games. The football games, specifically, and all other sports, have to have an entertainment aspect with them, hundred percent. You know what happened when, with the, I think the first year in Toledo, Ohio, mm. uh, my university, they were really uh, uh, serious about sports. They had a big sports center. We were spending our whole day there after school. So the day that they have a game, a football game, American football game. They will bring the, uh, a trashed car in the middle of the uh, campus and they will put the logo and they will spray the name of the other university coming to play home. home. And they'll put uh, baseball uh, bats and you'll have, you know, uh, people come and crashing this car Score, yeah. and they'll have a barbecue next to it and music and people dancing and all of that just preparing for the game. You know, so it's full day of entertainment and people and you'll see parents coming and small kids and grandparents. It's grandparents. a whole shebang, yeah. Yeah. And you go to Europe now. Europe, for example, the last uh, camp we went to to Spain in Barcelona. So the whole family is there supporting. We're talking about under tens, nine, eight, seven years old. Hmm. The whole parents are there again. 
food and music on the side. But there's another you know? thing we're not mentioning, drinking as well. Drinking, drinking. It's a big thing for them, you know. And they're drinking and everything and everyone is happy after drinking. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but they have a culture. Before the game, before the game, the parents will be uh, uploading the, the players. Sure. You know, and they will stay quiet the whole game. Okay. They will leave the coach uh, running the game. Sure. In between uh, the halves, they will applaud them. They will cheer them up. At the end of the game, the kids will uh, clap for the parents for coming for them. You're making, oh my God, you're making me play the devil's advocate. <laughs> Christ almighty. Yeah, but also those same kids go out and become football hooligans and start smashing up. <laughs> they're, right? they're, let's, let's, they're trying to, they're trying to uh, uh, teach them something, whether they learn or not, that's a different story. <laughs> but there is a culture, there is something that keeps uh, not only the, the players on the field, but the audience, the families, the supporters engaged, understand, involved so here it's basically i never my 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 parents never see me play football never see me play football okay. now in, in in winners you will have moms and dads sitting outside having their coffee and tea and watching their kids uh, playing football it's a totally different time but the problem Arab is that we don't like although we come from bedouins we don't like al haa we we have a air conditioned places where they sit. Yeah. Bad. The coffee shop, yeah, and and it's all glass. I I designed the place. La la stadium, not so good. No, the stadium is a different story. You can work with that on that. You played six months of good weather. Winter, Just play yeah. this and bring the people at this time. There is a lot of solutions. I I think you know I, th I think the reason why American football is so popular in America. I mean, they, they spend more. Americans spend more on American football than they spend on science mm. as a collective, which is. Unbelievable, considering that's the country who did yeah. GPS, who did iPhones and everything else, right? Yeah. And, and I think some of the key metrics that are missing in football, I think is one is the cheerleader aspect, one is the musicians, right? Yeah. They always have that band practice, mm. right? And I think the, the, the third thing is that they, they don't get like that. I mean, America does the national anthem, you yeah, know? But, but it's, it's all entertainment all over. Exactly. It's together. Because, exactly. Uh, um, I, I've seen a um, J Lo uh, documentary, mm. and she had she she was uh, singing along with Shakira on the uh, su uh, Super Bowl. Super Bowl, yeah, Super Bowl. So she was saying uh, one point eight billion or million people watching her concert for J Lo. This was very big. It's of achievement, of course, in a sports game, in a sports game. So it's entertainment, of course. If if they realize this here, so it's too big industries, sports and entertainment, putting them together, you generate huge Unholy money. union, absolutely. You know, uh, UAE is using this very smartly. They have Mubadala, which okay. is the sovereign wealth fund. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they have an arm called Flash, if I'm mm. not mistaken. And they invested in UFC. And, and that's why you see all the UFC games in Abu Dhabi. And one of my friends, is, he's a big fan. So he, he goes there and he say, we start the event of, of UFC games at maybe 6 or 5 p.m. We finish at 2 a.m. My God. One yeah. day. So yeah. imagine how much food they bought, how much uh, people bought the tickets, wh what's happening, all the entertainment in between, how many, pe how many people working in this industry. I remember watching it during COVID because I remember seeing the audience and it was almost everyone wearing masks. They, they pushed through regardless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it is impressive what, what UAE is doing. But do you, feel like, do you feel like doing all this effort that you're putting in, that it makes sense doing it in Bahrain of all places? You can. See at the Brave, big example, the sure. stadium is full. Sure. Stadium is full. Sure. So you can. Sure. Just, just in, in my opinion, um, again, combine the two, entertainment and sports. Yeah. Bring the right people to manage these things. And you can generate a lot of money. A uh, lot of money. I, I don't disagree with that. I just think of, you know, the effort that you're putting in and the return on your investment, I feel like you go further, faster, doing it either in Riyadh or doing it either in Dubai. 100%. Right? 100%. So we can agree on that. 100%. The, the, see, I started my business in Bahrain. Yeah. Because it's my country and I know people and everything. Yeah. And and, and it's very good to start here. Hmm. It's, it's, you will learn a lot. You have a very str strong and good uh, business structure. 
Um, there is laws and regulations. Uh, there is WASTA, of course, everywhere. But it, if you do it here, then you can succeed other places because the market is very low, small here, very small. So you have to, my plan was from the beginning to open outside of Bahrain. Sure, sure, so sure, as sure, soon sure. as I was stable here, I jumped it to Saudi. Sure. And Saudi is a different story. But there's so much more free capital available in Saudi. There's so much more investment opportunity from Saudi. Exactly, 100%. Right? I, I know so many companies here in Bahrain, because by the way, I, I've sat with so many entrepreneurs, business owners sitting in your seat right there, and I, I hear kind of the same kind of dialogue as this, the story. One majority of, of owners here in Bahrain, they might have a headquarters here in Bahrain, but their listing is in the US or Belgium. Hmm. <laughs> you looked away right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. See, yeah. I, I, my, my expansion will be in Saudi, hundred percent. Where is your listing? Where do you where do you put yourself on your website? Uh, currently, I have the website. What do you mean by? Uh, well, because because for uh, let me put. I don't know how to put it the right way. So so most of the companies I know or or C, CEOs, owners, entrepreneurs who sit here. Uh, they all have either a shell corporation in Belgium or shell corporation oh, in Nevada no. or the U.S. You say, oh, no, um, Maya Chocolates. I can't, I can't believe it. I bring this up now a third time today. <laughs> uh, her valuation was $50 million. Yeah. Um, she made a big marketing push, made in Bahrain, Bahrain owned, Bahrain this, Bahrain that. And the valuation dropped to $10 million. Mm. <laughs> you looked at the camera. <laughs> no, no, I, I know. By I, the way, we can cut all this stuff in I if know, you were worried or something I work like with, that. I work with Sonia, uh, Sonia Janah. I work with exactly. Her. I know the the guys. I I totally agree. Uh, maybe I, I I'm not surprised with what you said. Even now, when I advise young entrepreneurs, I tell them when they tell me oh, when they start. Um, see, I'm a mentor in Biban. You, you heard about hey, it? Hey. Yeah. So uh, now I'm I'm helping them for their pitch. So the first thing they say, it's a Bahraini brand and, and it's everything Bahraini about it and all of that. And I'm telling him, where is the value in this? Where is it's the a, value? It's so sad. It's, yeah. It breaks my heart. Every Why time. would I give you my money, okay, uh, as an investor? Sure. You'll be sitting in front of uh, talking to investors. Why would I give you money? Sure. Invest with you if you're a Bahraini brand. I agree. What you'll give me back, you know? So now, see, my, if you check my Instagram in, in Saudi, mm. Winners Academy KSA, mm. nothing to do with Bahrain. It's, nothing. It's sad. It's sad. I it's... keep everything Saudi and keep everything Bahrain is Bahrain and Saudi, everything Saudi. We live there. The, the employees are Saudis. We know their culture. We, we um, announce things that are related to them. It's, it's a Saudi brand there. It's a Bahraini brand here. The Saudi brand will grow bigger, sure. much bigger. The Bahraini brand will stay small and nice and cute, you know, and and and, and survive. Uh, but the Saudi brand, where it should go further and further. Well, the reason I'm bringing this topic up is because it's it's, it's far more wide reaching than just the market opinion. I mean, you have problems with with the estimation of customers when they see Bahrain. It's made in Bahrain. They get you know this is low quality. That's usually the, yeah. Uh, this is what not wasn't my point. My, no, no. I, I, what I was trying to add yeah. on to it, sorry, yeah. was 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 when you list it in in a US or UK, VCs are so much more happier to invest into it because because Bahrain's small. Uh, this is my point. Sure, Bahrain's too small. The, the uh, purchasing power is not that big. Sure, it's good to set up here. It's very good to set up here to to learn to uh, prepare, uh, it's a nice gateway to Saudi. Saudi have its difficulties I agree. Uh, to operate. Um, it, it, Bahrain is a very nice place to live in. Absolutely. You know, there's a lot of advantages, but when you come to investments and, and uh, expansions and scaling up, sure. then Bahrain is not the right place. It's a nice gate, uh, uh, gateway. Ma, we're miscommunicating, Habibi. What I'm, what, all I'm trying to say is that as a VC from working in a bank perspective, mm. if you see a, a firm popping up as a potential client or potential investment opportunity, you see one that's listed in Bahrain and one listed in the US. They both could be operating in Bahrain, yeah, yeah, but yeah. we both know where that money is more likely to go than not, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, I'm, what I'm, I'm saying. I'm with you with that, yeah, 100%. 100%. And, and that's what's heartbreaking is because we, especially from, from, I mean, the biggest investment fund is Saudi Arabia. I think maybe second biggest, I'm not sure if, mm. if Netherlands have taken over or not. Or Scandinavia, yeah. um, but but 
it's it's a shame that all our resources and money gets pulled into the West. <laughs> we yeah. don't do a lot of investment domestically, and that sucks. Yeah, but th things are changing. Absolutely, things are changing quick. Absolutely, uh, I believe. I really believe in in our region. I really believe in the business here. Uh, I'm very positive about it. I see the change. I see the change in people. Uh, my Saudi employees. Uh, I'm very proud of them. They're young, they're ambitious, they're positive, they're hard workers. They accept low salaries with no issues. They want the experience. We never had that before, never. I, I totally agree with you. I think what, what really needs to, to, to happen at a domestic scale is that it needs to, we need to see domestic products with a sense of pride. Right. We have to. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. We have to like like it, it. We shouldn't be looking at like oh like a Bahraini football team. Ooh, what kind of football players they have? Yeah, Do you know what I mean? Exactly. And and that mentality has to not just change internationally. It has to change domestically. Domestically, you have to work with the young ones. You have to work with the whole environment, the whole people, everyone around it. Exactly. Because because the problem is that a lot of these parents, for for play from the players' perspective, or parents are like, well, yeah, but my son isn't messy. Yeah, but this isn't Brazil. Yeah, this isn't exactly right. Hundred percent. So, so we're speaking the same language. Yeah, here. yeah, yeah, yeah. And the only way of fixing that is education. Yeah, That's education, the... and it's it's hard. It's not easy. Um, I have I, the first the if I can say this story, sure. you can edit whatever you like. But the first week in Saudi, we don't have to worry about me. You have to worry about you. <laughs> I'm okay. I don't. I, I, I know. I don't know if this story is as. As I mean, it's, it's it's a fact. We can talk about anything if it's you a like. Fact. Sure. So the the first <laughs> week, I operated in Saudi. Mm. Um, my, our uniform is Adidas. Mm. Okay, I love the brand and I work with them and everything. So I was telling the the parent who came rushing into the office, why are you're you're charging this much for a uniform for playing football. And I was telling him, you know, it's, it's an Adidas brand and it's, it's, it's good and it, quality is good for your kids to play proper football. They need to wear proper brand. Yeah. And he was telling, telling me in Arabic, what are they going to do in their life? You know? oh, and sucks. I was like, I was shocked, you know? And, I, and I, I, I was a little bit aggressive with him. I told him, you're coming here and paying money for your kids, not for, not for us to, be, to babysit them. If you don't want them to play football, take them somewhere else so and let, let them play. And, he, and, and I told him, why are you looking at your kids this way? And why, how you dare say this about your kids? Mm. You know, they, <laughs> exactly. And where, where are you going to, what they will reach if you are the father? Hey. You know? Exactly. I agree so with if you. we keep doing this and for our kids, where they will reach nothing. I agree with you. I, this is this is the things that that suck at a domestic level. And remember, off the camera, we talked a little bit about it. That that we had, especially in Bahrain, the mentality of the British being you know superior, mm, mm. and uh, India suffers with that same problem. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, 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 Canadians, uh, well, it's technically still part of the the <laughs> British colony. Yeah. It's the other way. Canadians, they want them to stay. <laughs> exactly, right? Yeah. So it, it's, it's, it's going to take maybe not even this generation. But mm. I think the way to combat it is we have to have domestic media, domestic entertainment. Mm. Right? I think that w what really needs to happen is, is having like Sundance, you know, like the film festival, what they have in America, the Sundance Film Festival or in Cannes. Mm. We need to have one here in the Gulf region, wherever you want to put it doesn't yeah, matter yeah. uh the sports uh, uh needs to have its own designated not just channel but streaming services 100 percent. really like like 100 like it's it's a big move it's a big move i think what you're doing is great you let people talk about their industries and the, and the things that they're facing and 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 broadcasting these things and people listening to these these things and start thinking about them at least and or recognizing oh yes oh my cousin is this way my my friend is this way i should advise this guy it's it's amazing how many people come up to me and and they 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 say you know what I never thought I could I I would I never thought I could even be someone like uh, Sonia like so, like someone like uh, like yourself like someone who they 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 think well I was born in this country I was born in this place I was born in this family and I'm never going to go anywhere above the station mm. and they have that mentality sometimes at twenty. Mm. You know, and that that really <laughs> that it's 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 frustrating. It's, it's hard if you didn't see it 
uh, I, I, from my experience, the people who never saw money, sure, they're hard to believe that they can generate money. People who, uh, I was telling this to my to to my kid. Mm. I was telling him when I was young, my father's uncle used mm. to be. Uh, he was uh, gangster. Well, <laughs> I got everyone father. was everyone's uncle was you doing know? something he was an architect mm. he had a house in Spain he had a house in, in, in Lebanon uh, he had a big compound uh, here in Sanad on, on the sea and every Tuesday I think all the he have a majlis and people come and we were young and we were see, watching this in front of our, how they respect him and you, so you see all of this and then it's it's i don't know it gets again drained in, your, in yeah. your brain absolutely and then when i when i grow i work grow up i work on uh, uh, banking investment placement and i start going around gcc and i saw people signing the millions in front of me without caring million here a million there two million here without you know it's not their money <laughs> i, saw, I saw money i saw money going around i saw it in front of me mm. you know and i and i said I can do that. I can reach these places. I can do these things. But when I said my, my friends, the employees, who their whole, their whole life just walking next to the wall, you know, being safe, uh, not taking risk, it's difficult to convince them. Sometimes I bring uh, bring opportunities for them. You know, you know this chocolate chocolate factory. It's a good opportunity. Let's put some money together and. Halas, if you're an entrepreneur, you live this life, you go take risk. Sure. But for them, it's too difficult. And then I started realizing that it's, it's a culture thing, it's a family thing. It's Some of them cannot get out of the box no matter what you do, unless they go through a dramatic thing in their life and they have to. Absolutely. Well, you I mean, you're the perfect example of getting out of the matrix. Right, you could have stuck very easily in being in corporate world, yes, yes, and yes, and 100%. retire at 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 sixty, being unhappy, yes, right, and all, and all illness and diseases, and uh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, yeah. and then you're just stuck there going through life and being like, well, what did I do? <laughs> exactly, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And when when I when I resigned from uh, Mom Telakot, I was working at Sovereign Wealth Fund in Bahrain, secure job, nice salary, good life, traveling all the all over the world. And, and I and I resigned to to open as a sports football mm. training company. You know, it was not uh, taken very well from a lot of people around me, family and stuff. You know, I, uh, for them, I was doing a mistake, a lifetime mistake, which is which is difficult to accept, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's so hard to you because you're you're you end up trying to justify it to people who just won't understand it. Yeah, and then now, for example, whenever I achieve anything, I go and show them. Look, look, you know. Especially like for my father, for example. Mm. Well, I, I try to impress. You That's know? never good enough, I imagine. Exactly. <laughs> right? It's, it, it's, it sucks. You I know, know exactly but, the You know, feeling. but when you start working with governments and, 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 and uh, huge, big people, like we signed with the Ministry of Sports. Mashallah. Sheikh Nasser um, uh, supported us. He announced the scholarship program. Mashallah. He, he announced our name and it was on stage, you know. These, يعني, uh, even even if uh, other family members will not see these things as as the right thing to do, at least it's self satisfaction. You know, Absolutely. you did something by your own and reach these levels. But there's also some truth to it that that some people will never get it. Yeah, you know, it doesn't matter how hard you try. It's their life. It's the way they think. You cannot force them to accept what you're doing. I, I think it's it's further than that. I think for for a lot of people, their whole world is structured in a certain way. Yeah. In yeah. order to accept that would mean they have to accept or change so much of their worldview. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? The principles and exactly. They have to change a lot of things. Yeah. And 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 they're like they just can't accept that the world that they've been living in is maybe not the world <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. is around us. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Now now for example, I'm I'm targeting and yeah, in Saudi especially. I'm trying to targeting to go all the way to uh, Mohammed bin Salman. Sure. Let's get know? back to your business. Let's yeah. hear it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pick up on you every time you do it. <laughs> no, but I mean, if you dream things. Sure. If you dream things, uh, you want to achieve them. Yeah, you slide can. it back in. I hear it. Let's hear it. <laughs> Sorry. So, why aren't you focused on content creation? Why are you doing it? I mean, I just don't understand why, why, why you're not having every like most of your matches that you're at least part of yeah. streamed on YouTube. Uh, 
streamed on Twitch. There's no audience for that. How do you build an audience? By producing content. Yeah. Right? I mean, you can't just wait for it to happen. No, I think there is an opportunity, definitely. Yeah. I, listen. It's just need focus, need some experience, need the right people to work with. You just need to get like a few camera, like get a few cameras. They don't going to cost you a, cost you an arm and a leg. I mean, you're going to be in the hole by maybe maybe a thousand BD. It it's a lot. Mm. It hurts, but you're going to no, keep that equipment. So I have I have a plan. Uh, if if you if I can sure, talk about let's my hear business, it. let's hear it. <laughs> let's hear it. See. See, I, that was natural. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was natural. That wasn't like some slidey way. That's natural. Yeah. I like that. I have a plan to to have uh, my my media marketing department to be a, a side business, mm. a sports media company, where we stream games and we because I as I we spoke before we we sat here about how you struggle getting the right uh, cameraman. Hmm. Even even my my uh, media guy now and winners, I sit uh, from hundred picture I pick one because he's not uh, he doesn't play football properly. I mean he plays good football, but I mean he wasn't trained properly football. So when he takes the picture of different angles, they are not the right angles. Okay, you know when you shoot the ball, your hands have to be in the right way. It's like lifting weights. You cannot put a, 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 a you cannot promote a okay. gym. Okay. With with pictures of people lifting weight in the wrong way. Sure. You'll see these guys are not, they don't know what they're doing. Sure. Even if they are training, but you want to see the perfect picture. Just put mirrors. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, there's a solution you, right need, there. you need to train, you need to work with, uh, with, with, uh, with people to, to create this department. Then this can serve this industry. Mm. You, if you have, there is no media company that I know of in the region that is focused only on sports. And this is the opportunity. Exactly. Right? I, I agree with you, but and it needs a lot of investment time and focus. And I don't want to diversify right now. But the the quickest way for your for your branch to grow and to reach the next level is to be in the service sector. And the service sector is the service of entertainment and media, right? Yeah. As you said it yourself, sports. 100%. And entertainment diffusion, right? I agree with you. And, and, and IT. And IT. Yeah. And, and the easiest way of gaining that audience, of breaking into it, if I was in your position, I would be hitting up every single sports bar in Bahrain yeah. and I would be making sure that when Bahraini matches are on, they're getting a matzah up, they're getting an email, they're getting mm. whatever, and they're putting that channel on. No, I agree with you 100%. Because the audience who are there in that bar or whatever else, they're going to be more interested seeing a Bahraini team playing and mm. being like, oh shit, that's Bahrain? Then some yeah, other yeah. Yeah, whatever. See, see, I'm I'm I was busy establishing the company. Sure, I was really busy establishing the company. So the past nine, ten years now, establishing for me still I'm, I look at the business still as a startup. Sure, you know. So now I have stability because now I have the right people in the right place. Sure. So now I can jump maybe or look into different opportunities. One of them is streaming and media and all of that sure that's a billion dollar industry right there it is it is i believe in that i believe but i need i don't want to sometimes you diversify i opened a restaurant sure you know oh god yeah <laughs> you yeah. thought i could eat for free and i'm telling you i closed it man <laughs> all this white hair all of all i need the year that i operated this restaurant was disaster because oh. i diversified from my main core passion mm -hmm. and time and, and experience i completely agree i know you exactly know? The feeling. <laughs> i don't know if you've you done that i know exactly the, the feeling whole, the same thing i know exactly the yeah feeling. <laughs> you think I, I wanted to take over a textile company you know <laughs> i didn't want that it's yeah a, i know exactly where you're coming from so so i believe in focusing uh, as soon as you have it running and uh, your hands are really off you're just supervising from from far away now jump into something different I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. I uh, Because the way I see your business model right now, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's centered around finding athletes, putting them through training, building the league, right? And then promoting that league eventually as stage four. Is that correct so far? As, as uh, More or less. It's, 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 it's a lot of things. You can promote talents for sure. individuals. And you can promote uh, the whole teams or sure. academies. You can promote the events, which is leagues and tournaments and competitions. So where would be the profit into it? All, all of them. If you promote the individual, hmm. win, 
we reach to a stage, Bahrain is not that there yet, maybe Saudi is soon enough. This individual can be, can sign a, a professional contract and you can get a percentage. So that's a very good income if you are in the right market and Saudi might be. Uh, the perception of this. skill is more important than skill. The perception? Of skill is more important than skill. So which means? Which means that- Marketing it the right if, if 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 there was enough international focus, enough media outlets, enough pointing for that team, the valuation of that team would be higher. Definitely. Right? Definitely. And so, so because I'm looking at it from a perspective of an investor, right? They're yeah. looking at your company, they like football, whatever else, right? Yeah. So their pitch to, to them is like, we're going to make profit on, on trading the players. Trading players, having a lot of members. Sure. Uh, uh, managing and operating a lot of events. Sure. Uh, managing uh, sports facilities. Sure. Uh, and it goes on. Okay. Corporate events, uh, you know. Okay, and do you want to franchise this business, or are you going to keep it? I nice? have to franchise in some 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 places. I have to, of course, yeah. because of technicalities and yeah, stuff yeah. like but that. But now yeah. I'm I'm joining uh, hands with with partners. I have a few partners coming in. They invested, mm. and and uh, after going to Saudi, so when they saw the Saudi opportunity, they came in. Of course, and and after getting the approval from here to be a, a private club, an mm. official company. Um, How hard was that procedure, by the way? To be honest, it wasn't very hard. Sure. It was not on our agenda. Okay. Because you cannot generate money here from being a sports club. So I was not planning. You to don't be. say. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't want to lose money. I have a good business. You know, uh, it's a sport, but it's private. And I kept it private as much as I can. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I got a direction that uh, we're trying to privatize privatize this the sports sector in Bahrain mm -hmm. you are a very you have a very good model mm -hmm. we think instead of changing the clubs the the government supported clubs in Bahrain to become private we think we should do it the other way start you, fresh you are private and we're gonna put you uh, in the system and then open the door for others sure you know so will you support would you be with us in this vision so I said, 100%, mm. let's do it. Mm. So they, we had to change a lot of things, the CR. <laughs> and, you, know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so we said, sure, let's do it together. <laughs> so, and I told them what kind of support we're gonna get because exactly. you, know, you know, these uh, uh, clubs, they get funding from the government. Yeah, we should make my khams yal. They get land and, go, and, and support. And what are you gonna give us? They said, don't worry, we're gonna support you all the way. Yeah. You know, well, and then- uh, Did that check ever come? And there's no money in the, in the support. Okay, you great. Know, it's just logistic support. Oh, brilliant. You know, whenever you're going to submit anything to the government, it should move quickly. Oh, wow. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Quite the wasta, my yeah. God. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and, and if I start there, man, I will not stop because uh, there are certain people don't understand how to support their country, oh. you know? Uh, we, no, we, no, they understand how to support themselves. They don't understand yeah, the company because part. We took the we took the risk going this just to support the country, just to keep the vision going, keep uh, doing the right things for the country. You know, money wise, there is nothing. Uh, even the investors now coming in on board with me are questioning my decision going going this way. Uh, however, I think there will be advantages in the future because the industry is moving so we'll be one of the first so they'll this always have some advantages but there's a lot of people who stop you on the way and the stupid small things that if i if i if i tell you these things you know even stupider than these things really yeah 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 if i tell you the reason why they delayed the the the, the establishment for sure. one year sure if i tell you i'll tell you off the records okay you know and <laughs> you're so worried with the camera rolling yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're talking big here man <laughs> because yeah uh, three mix three pictures were missing on the on the front <laughs> entry and <laughs> you got in trouble for that immediately yeah huh? <laughs> because uh that's what i'm saying you know i get so, it i get it i get it it's unfortunately and hopefully these th people will start realizing the bigger picture no, I agree. I mean, a lot of what sucks is yeah, this, I'll bring up a story from my ex. Her dad is, you know, he's like a, he's like glass in the sense of like totally honest. You can see my pockets, that kind of stuff, mm. right? 
He lives in India. He makes his income in India. Wealthy man. He pays his full amount of taxes, which is for India unusual. Yeah, he's an angel. There. Exactly. Mm. Now the problem with paying your full amount of taxes, the government picked up knows, on it knows and, what you're doing and says, "Hey, you know what? Why are you paying your full amount of taxes? What are you doing?" Mm. So he became suspicious because because he's honest. Yeah. It, can you think about that mentality for a second? Yeah. To, to, to suddenly he's, have he's not um, like the typical way. So there's something wrong, inappropriate. Yeah, wrong. And so he's been investigated. I think now for six months, a year, or something like that. And the problem is, once you're on the radar, mm. then in their mind it becomes well, there must be something wrong. Yeah, yeah. We did invest six months investing the investigating yeah. this guy for for nothing to be clean. Yeah. Right. And so now they're they're pulling their heels. Mm. Going through bank records, going through this, going through this. He's an employee. He's not. He's not a business owner. You know, he's not like a massive millionaire. He's got a bit of money. Amazing. Yeah. But you know, there's unfortunately, no yeah. Sometimes, uh, if, if you do things the right way, people will always have question marks. Habibi, there's no such thing as a good deed that goes unpunished. Yeah. That's. No, I believe that, and people always, always, you, when, whatever, whatever you're gonna do, people will always question what you're doing. So do it your way. If you believe the right way uh, is the right way, just keep doing that. Don't care about people. Uh, when we operated in Saudi, unfortunately, people are coming to us and telling us, "You want your your papers to finish? Just give me three hundred, uh, four hundred reals." This was you before know? MBS or during MBS. During now, during MBS now, now. Talking, mashallah, yeah. they're very brave. Yeah, yeah. So I Did, was, and I was telling them the same thing, and I'm telling them, "You are so brave to to ask me this question," and they're telling me, "It's not me, you know, it's, it's someone there." My boss. <laughs> no, it's someone in in, uh, in this uh, department. It's not. Uh, I'm not asking. He's asking. Yeah. Okay, and they delay you. They delay you for months until you're so tired you cannot do anything. I'm really surprised. I thought the whole Ritz Hotel thing. No, I'm talking very about very small employees. No, I know. I thought the the with the whole come in hotels, hotel hotel let's stay it there. It will come to them. Trust me, I, he's coming to them. Exactly. He right? is. He is, and we, I'm so happy about it because I didn't pay a single real, exactly, or a dinar in Bahrain or Saudi, to support these guys because I tell I tell them in their face, I'll wait three hundred years. I'll wait two two years. I will not give you one real. I, 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 to, to, to lead on to what you're saying, I had a guy, a uh, friend of my father, uh, we had just like lunch and we we're just talking. His son started a, a, a crypto fund, blah, 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 blah. And he's doing a pump and dump scheme, mm. right? In the sense of like, they're, they're together in a group, they agree to when to buy and when to sell to artificially mm. manipulate the market. And I remember talking to him and I said, you know what you're doing there is fraud, first mm. of all. Number two, you you don't believe that the U.S. isn't taking tra track of this stuff or your local government, right? And mm. sooner or later, they're going to take the biggest people or the biggest uh, fraudulent guys yeah. and they will slap them so hard that their head will spin because that's mm. exactly what ha happened with junk bonds. If yeah. you remember back, yeah, back in yeah. the 80s, right? It was yeah. unregulated. It was the wild, wild west. Yeah, A lot of fraud was committed. And then uh, some, some people <laughs> function this way, by the way, they, they like to, to work this way. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. You know, yeah. you see it, uh, but it's all fun and games until and <laughs> the pipers do, yeah, right? Yeah. But if you stay straight from my experience, it's the right way. I agree it's with you. It's hard. It's very hard. You have to stay and a lot of things it's in life and, uh, and everything, you know, if you, it's hard, people will, will fight you, uh, and they want to push you around. And well, if you stay the, the right way, eventually it's it will get I, to the right place i totally agree with you i think it's okay to bullshit a little bit you know you know that's selling yeah yeah, yeah. right you, yeah, you yeah. got to make the sale yeah you have right to put the spices and exactly yeah. right that's that's its own thing and that's fine yeah uh but i think if you're if you're actively trying to manipulate something i think that the pipers do right <laughs> yeah definitely. sooner or later numbers aren't gonna match up definitely definitely yeah. Habibi, I've, I've said this to you once and I'll say it to you a hundredth, a hundredth time. I still think that you should be focusing on producing content. Yeah. Because if you're not going to do it, someone else is going to do it and you're going to be crying because that's a billion dollar industry right there. Yeah, but what, what, what do you mean by content? What's it, I mean, other than games. Forget, I mean, we had a guy on just yesterday. What was his name, D? Eddie? Uh, 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 Dan? 
uh, the gamer guy? Spooky man, something. Uh -huh. He plays video games. What was it? Like he has like eight hundred thousand followers, and uh -huh. all he does is playing games, right? And he has like seven hundred thousand views, seventy seventy thousand views. Yeah, that's the new trend now. They play the game, people watch them. But Habibi, don't you think that the potentiality of it is if you can get two guys speak Arabic, مؤدبين يعني مشاطين شكلهم يعني good مؤدبين nice good haircut they're good. Guys, <laughs> this is the most important thing. <laughs> put camera here, here, and then put in the background like the match, and they yeah. can do and talking about the match. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll do business together soon. So. No, forget, don't get me involved. I have enough dealing with these guys. I don't yeah. want to get more. No, definitely. It. There's a huge, huge opportunity. Definitely. 100%. But I think that's the easiest way of to, to get yeah. audience I, I, acceptance. I still need to finish my papers in Saudi. Yeah. You know, it's taking me three years. Why Why you Saudi? Why, why not UAE? Where? Why not UAE? Why Saudi? Oh, UAE, you know. It's, for me, it's not the right time. It's, it's, it's uh, overcrowded. Everyone's there. Manchester United, PSG, City. <laughs> What's winners there, you know? Winners in Saudi now. Sure. It's big. Sure. We are big there. It's three years operating there. Mashallah. And the government is, is, is recognizing us. Al uh, Mahd Academy, which is the government academy, it's like Aspire in, in Qatar. Okay. They did, a f they went all around Saudi. Sure. Checking all academies. Sure. We are offline now, I think. Of course. Yeah. So they checked all academies and they said the best academy in Saudi Arabia is winners. Okay. And we should put them as a benchmark. Okay. Mashallah. Mumtaz. You know, because it's the right time to go there. But if I go to UAE now, I'll be spending time and effort for nothing. For okay. nothing. Okay. Because it's saturated with academies, saturated with huge names and clubs, mm. you know? But I, I cannot have an impact. Do you think that the saturation... So this is my concern with when it comes to real... I mean, I'm from Saudi Arabia, right? Women Saudi. Me and him always fight on the same topic. I still think that you can you can make so, so you can make Riyadh as much as you want the financial center of the Gulf region, mm. but you as a banker can speak about this. Where do you want to live? You want to live somewhere where it's fun. They they need to develop uh, the, the the lifestyle aspect hundred percent. They need to. I, there, I mean, there are not enough schools. I agree. And proper school for that for to to bring the right people to live there. I agree, but forget about Westerners. Forget about Kahul. Just alone, who wants to live in Sahara and who wants to live on a beach? That's what I'm saying. Right? No, but, but, but with money, you can make uh, Sahara becomes heaven, you know? But you need, uh, uh, the simple thing is, I have a friend, he works in Adidas, and Adidas shifting the whole business. They're going, taking it out of UAE and operating the headquarters in Riyadh. Yeah. Yeah, because Saudi uh, told them so. Sure. They told them, you want, you want to sell your products in Saudi? Sure. Come bring your headquarters here. But don't you feel like it'll do the same thing like with OSN, where they have a headquarters here in Bahrain? But they'll, they'll move. But, Everyone will move. Yeah, but their most of their staff are still, <laughs> right? No, Bahrain and Saudi is different because it's just the border. They can work there and live here. It's not yeah. a problem. But I mean, this guy is telling me I have three kids. Mm. I cannot enroll them. I'm not finding in good schools. Why don't you do homeschooling? For they, three kids. Eh? I don't know. No, I'm talking about the, the guy. Going oh, the guy. Saudi. I thought you meant your kids. No, no, no. no. He's going to, to Saudi. Sure. And he needs good schools. And he's staying, he's telling me the country is pushing the business to come in but they're not putting the right lifestyle aspects. صح, صح, and this is, this is the same thing that happened to AE, by the way, to Dubai. صح, صح. When they started uh, attracting talents, these people were, were looking for golf courses, صح. for uh, the right schools, the right bars, the right restaurants. صح. If you don't provide the, uh, enough apartments, you know, properly. So, but don't they have the same problem even right now with the UAE, مع ال, مع waste management? That they didn't do the piping correctly. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, and they, especially Mahal Burj Khalifa, they still have to, they have to literally take the waste in trucks. Still. Out. Wow. Bad planning, right? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and this is the problem when, when, you, when, you, when you try to do too much too soon. Too fast, yeah, too fast, yeah. You have to plan it properly. Well, that's what what's the, Mark Zuckerberg used to famously say this, right? Move fast and break things. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you no. end up with that kind of a situation. Yeah, they're breaking everything now. My God, my God. But we need to. We're, we're very far away from the world, so we need to work fast where, where do you think where do you think uh, the do you think we're 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 gonna be more 
like a Western country? Do you think we're going to be more like Asia, you know, like India with Moody, where they've done like renationalization and they're, go they're, they're, they're saying like, we don't want to wear Western clothes. We want to wear the saris and all that. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that we would be. We would be. You to think Thorpe is going to come? There's going to be a comeback. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Really, hundred percent. And we will. I think. I believe that we're going to be. We'll lead the world mm. we, again. Not just. Not just with. We're not just energy. No, because that's what we're leading the world right, right yeah, now. Yeah, I know. But from what I see, uh, we're going the right direction. We have big youth uh, population who are believing in their country, their culture, their religion, and and and. I think they have the power to move things. Uh, I really feel that we're going in this direction. Because I, I spoke about this topic with, with a few ministers, both in Bahrain and from the Saudi perspective, and I asked them, how do you, how do you fix the country's brain drain? Mm. Right? Because if, if you're doing well in school, you go to a U.S. university, chances are you find a good job in the U.S. and it's very unlikely you're going to come back to Saudi. Yeah. Right? And, and the same thing. Unless things... As we said, start changing. It's hard. It's hard. I mean, my dad is a perfect example. He he worked at Shell, and if his mom didn't get sick, he would have never came to. But, but when was that? Like this, uh, this was seventies. Yeah. And the same example with me. I was in the U.S., and if my mom didn't get sick, I would have not been afraid. <laughs> yeah, I understand. This was before, but now it's different. Uh, يعني وش وش وجهك يعني البحرين؟ Me. Because See, you were in Canada at the time. Yeah, point. I was there. I was. I stayed there. I loved it there. I loved the people there, the country, everything. But uh, again, family, family influence, and all of that. But now, يعني, I'm seeing the issues that they are facing in, in in the West. Nobody. It's difficult to raise kids there. They are. They are suffering. You know what? My coaches. I have Portuguese, Spanish, Romanian, Canadian. Mm. They're telling me. I was telling them, are your family are happy that you're living here? Because I saw one of them just calling his mom, telling her I'm fine, everything. So I'm telling them, oh, how, what's the perception? Hmm. He's saying, so listen to what they're saying. Oh, it's the dream, our dream to work in the GCC. These, these are Europeans. Mashallah. They said, if we get a contract in the GCC, the whole, <laughs> see the, how life is changing, huh? Mm. The whole neighborhood will come to congratulate us <sighs> that you got a contract in the GCC. But don't you worry that it's because of that misperception that they think like Arabs are so wealthy and all. I mean, you know what I'm going Yeah, to but they're getting better salaries. It's true. Uh, my Spanish coach. Sure. He's getting a better salary than, than working in Spain. When, when, when we went to the last camp in Spain, he came with us as a Spanish yeah. so, to talk and everything. So he was telling me it's too cheap now here for me because my salary is good. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. As Nabil. your boss, as, as his boss, didn't you look at him going like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but he was comparing uh, beer. Yeah. He was saying, I'm paying in Bahrain, uh, I, I don't know, six, six euros. Six BDs, or th three BDs, whatever. Yeah. Six, six euros, euros, right? And in, in, uh, in Barcelona where we were, so he paid two euros or something. Rich man. He's a rich man. He can exactly. play, yeah. <laughs> so see, see the difference now in life. So people will come here. So why why our people will not come back after getting the right, you true. know, experience and true, 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 true. No, I can see it in front of me. You know, so that's why I I'm believing, and I get sometimes I get surprised. Like wow. So you, they are not afraid that we are terrorists, we are this and that. You said, no, 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 this was all in the past. This is, but that's no? never been like Spain and France and that's, well, a little bit of France, right? But you know, PSG, you know, owned by, by Qatar and, hey. and City owned by uh, Abu Dhabi, hey. you know, and, and the influence that they made on the cities, the jobs that they created for these people in their country, the investments, the opportunities, the, the glory that they brought to them, it affected a lot of things. I think Saudi owns Twitter as well, or partly. I think 6% or something like that. Yeah, it's, uh, I think Walid bin Talal. Hey. Yeah. Yeah, there's 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 uh, Twitter, and, and I think they I think with Saudis also own a percentage of Apple. Almost all the tech companies yeah. is, is owned by some percentage of, yeah. of us. But, you know, what do you think happened between when you were, when were you in Canada? You were in what, like the 90s? In the, uh, I don't want to date you. <laughs> yeah. No, I graduated in 99. Okay. High school. So I went there in the 2000s. 2000s. 
Yeah. So what do you think happened between the early 2000s? Because it, I mean, I grew up idolizing Amrika. Yeah. And I grew up, yeah, I mean, same. 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 And I remember my, my, my dad was, his skin color was, was much darker than I am. Mm. And I remember thinking to myself, still as a child, and I can still remember thinking, I don't want to go to Shams. I don't want to go to Shams. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> because I was like raised, Yanni, but all the Americans, all the heroes were always white. Oh. You know? No, not to this extent for me. <laughs> Wallahi, ahlif, I'm, I'm sorry, Dad, but it, it no, was. No, no, for me, it was like uh, more of action movies and, you know, and, and this kind of, uh, these kind of things. So I want to see these things. And, and I want, man, the, when, you know, before going to bed, the, my, my parents were having two. Promises to us just to sleep, you know. Hey. You know, inshallah, we'll get us, we'll build a swimming pool hey. in the house and we'll go to Walt Disney. Oh, mashallah. You know, so, <laughs> so if you sleep, I'll take you there. If you sleep, I'll do the other. So, so what well, was a dream for us? So, when we went to the States, hey. we went directly to Florida, you know, we went to New York. My hey. father's friend, he was, uh, he's a Lebanese, he used hey. to work in Bahrain, and he is the manager or regional manager of the cigarettes Marlboro. Oh, wow. You know? so, so you got truckload. <laughs> no, when we went there, I saw you, you you're yeah, smoking. Smoke bread, yeah. yeah, so when we went there. Uh, As easy. <laughs> they they uh, took us from the airport with the limousine, mm. New York. MashaAllah. With the limousine. We went to, I, I can't remember the name of the hotel so it's all vip so this was my experience in the states you know and it ruined young, you it ruined you <laughs> and i went to florida after that and we walt disney and we took this uh, a house in the in, in the nice place and it was magical hey. you know so i said i told my father listen i'll do whatever to hey. to go to the states i want to live there i want to study there hey. so he took me out of a private school and put me in a public school to hey. save money hey. to take me to the states and he told me, if you want, I'll take you out. You go to public. I said, no problem. I'll sacrifice. Khalas. Yeah. But when I went there, back there to Toledo, Ohio, it was all cows and, and farms. Oh, and no. <laughs> they tricked you. <laughs> totally different experience. Do so, you regret it now or do you look no, back no, and no, go no. so I, happy? That, no, I did all. I don't regret anything. Anything. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. W well, what do you think happened between the last 20 years? How did the U.S. become like this? I, I believe in the conspiracy theory. I believe in the, a lot of things that is happening for a reason. It, it's, it was not, it's, it's not a mistake. To have what I think it is, and you can correct me if, if you think I'm going too far. I think a deen is important. Haganas. Definitely, 100%. And, and forget يعني, what religion, but if, if there's no connection with the community, Principles. Or principles. Or whatever you whatever you pray to. But if there's that lack, that lack of community, I think it devastates uh, See, society. For them, uh, uh, they separated religion from uh, state. State. A. And then they uh, disrespected the religion, whatever a. religion it is. A. It's, a. Not, it's not about Islam and, and, and Christianity. Christianity. That's not what or, either of us or, are saying. Or uh, Jews or whatever. It's, it's nothing to do with that. It's just having. A family, a normal life. Uh, and it, it, it's now it's you'll be happy to have the basics. صح, صح. A mom, a dad, and children. صح. This is shocked. This is not the right thing for them now. This is one one option. So uh, a country going this way, you know, and, and the society growing in, 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 a, in a way like this, it's too clear. It, I mean, you know, if you look at, I mean, we don't have a single, we, we, we don't, I mean, we have some homeless case issues in the Gulf region, but it's not, I mean, يعني, uh, it, this doesn't happen. It, uh, family takes care of them or whatever. You know, this is not happens in the U.S. When you walk down in Florida, when you walk down in California, when you walk down in New York, uh, every time I'm surprised at, at how many people are sleeping out on the streets. Yeah. You know, and it, 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 it shocks me to, 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 to. To think, yeah, I think uh, culture-wise, we are we are blessed. Alhamdulillah. Wallahi, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. We are blessed. Yeah. Even if you go, for example, to South America, like you know, mm. I, you know, I have a lot of friends from there. They they have this, and this is saving them. You know, the the family, family is everything. You know, parents, grandparents. You came for your mom. Mm. Your father came for his mom. Mm. Others will not do that. 
enjoy حق عائلتك otherwise if you if, yeah. you if you didn't have that close connection with your family yeah. you probably so, would stay so in Canada so Asia have this uh, South America have this. it's just the, it's just even the West it's just the states mm. because still in Europe if they, if you're very westernized then yes like I had a Ukrainian lady working for me uh, in winners and she, I told her I was talking and she was telling me there's a joke there but I'm not going to make it <laughs> <laughs> so okay so tell me about this Ukrainian lady I was I was telling her what I was trying I was trying to coach her to okay. align her personal plans with the business plans so that she works hard okay okay so I, I was telling her how can working here help you in your life so okay. that you you know you don't have two lives so, so you focus here sure because just they to, don't think about that like that yeah Ukraine. I know but I was coaching her so yeah, yeah, yeah. this is a part of coaching to align their personal with the corporate and then you can, they will work and the same goal. Sure. So she was telling me that only thing that I can be secured about is having an apartment in my country because if I retire, whatever, I don't have a place to go. I have parents, <laughs> I have everything. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing because well, that, that didn't work out, didn't it? Now, I mean, <laughs> that, that apartment in Ukraine is gonna oh, hold yeah. up, yeah. <laughs> Maybe you should have looked for Russia for yeah, that apartment. That's Fuck, a different you know? story, man. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> as soon as you said Ukraine apartment, I just it I killed me. I should have changed the country. Yeah. <laughs> but but my point was, is they don't have a place to go. Even the, she have a mom, a dad, everything, a parents, everything. Mm. But they will not work on her back. Mm. They will not work on her back. She, she have to look for a place to live. If she will die if she's sick. They don't care. You're out of our house. Live your life. It's strange, isn't it? It's so strange how how because this doesn't happen in China. They're, no. they're much more communal oriented. No. Doesn't happen in in Asia. They're much more communal inhabited. It doesn't even happen in Africa, to be honest. Yeah. Right. I just I don't understand. I don't understand how how it deviated so much in 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 that sense. That's what I'm saying. It's it's a big it's a big thing. It's it's happening for a reason. Mm. It's not by mistake. These mm. things are for me it doesn't happen. By, it's not culture because humanity started in a way and developed in a way. Mm. And either you develop in a right way or develop mm. in a wrong way. Mm. So these guys are going to the wrong way. I agree. I agree. I think they 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 they're walking towards the wrong direction. Yeah. And they think there needs to be a correction to to get them back to 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 a place of prosperity, right? And they're not arguing about what is a man and what is a woman and I mean, who has time for that? It's ridiculous, man. It's you ridiculous. Know? And to think about that less than less than 1% less than 0.1% of the population identifies as trans yet it is the, <laughs> the topic that the world talks about like this is an issue that the world is facing right exactly there are, there are wars there are hunger a lot of things that people need to survive absolutely but yeah. they're like yeah you know what <laughs> did you see this clip when uh, a guy with uh, someone they went into the library and the lady told them Oh, you cannot uh, film? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I said, identify as a camera. Yeah, and she was confused, like, uh, I guess you're fine. Okay, yeah, I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to be fired. Isn't Imagine. that weird to think Imagine. about? Imagine. All right, let's get back to your business because there's a few more questions I wanted to ask you. How does your subscription work? How does your model work? So... Uh, Say I come through your front door, I want to be a football guy, you right? You just fill a form. And you, you, you show the me the fees. way out. <laughs> you know, Say, give, give my son come back 10 years ago no from four years up to uh 16 years old sure you just fill the form pay the fees and join the club sure no matter what level you are in sure and then we're going to work on the either put you in the right place sure sure, sure as sure. a footballer sure if you are above 16 okay you'll have to go through a tryout okay you know? oh okay so you don't take everyone on Above 16. Above 16, it's, it's... Yeah, it's too late. Too late. Too late. So if you have the basics, okay. we can develop you. It's fine. Okay. If you don't have the basics, sorry, we cannot take you. And what's the latest somebody can join? What was the latest you've accepted so far, age-wise? Oh, we have 30s. We have... 30s? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have people who, who played in clubs, stopped playing, injury, whatever. They want to come back and play. Oh, but they're doing it for fun rather than career. Yeah, I mean, it's it's until now. Oh, we, sure, we don't want to. <laughs> no, yeah, we don't want to say. Well, no, yeah. because yeah, until now we were not officially in a in a, a co- official competition. Sure. But as soon as we enter the official competitions, it's a it's a different league. 
Have you set a date when you want to do the official competition? Depending on them, not us. Oh, really? Uh, the, the Bahrain Football Association, they need to, to finish the papers. Because you're already a league at this point, we right? Are, That's we all are. signed and done. We are. It's it's that the it's never happened. Okay. So they are not ready. <laughs> you know, legally. <laughs> legal documents, you know. <laughs> 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 isn't, that, isn't, it, it does, isn't that like a kick up the ass? <laughs> they are not ready. They were telling us, yani, let's sit and put it together. And yeah, like, 10 years from now. I don't know, you know, but, uh, other, other places did it. So just take what they have and, and do it. It's painful, isn't it? <sighs> yeah. So, so yeah, so that's, that's the football part. Okay. Bahrain, Saudi, same. We have the fitness. And that uh, for any age, right? Or is yeah, that... fitness for any age. We don't accept below 14 in fitness. Okay. And it's based on uh, classes. So we do uh, from 4 p.m. every hour. There's a ladies section. There's a men's section. We have mixed classes. Okay. And we follow the HIT training. Okay. High intensity interval training. Exactly. This is for us. It works the best. Sure. We tried insanity. If you heard about it mm -hmm. before. We That's tried, brutal. That's it's yeah. not fun. We tried a lot of things. And from experience, we saw the best results, the continuity is with the head training and there's different programs that you can uh, adopt. So we do that. And how does that work? Is it a monthly subscription and monthly. then you pay per class? No, no, monthly subscription. Okay, can you say the amount? Yeah, yeah it's 40 BD for men, 35 for ladies. Okay. Our academy is 70 BD monthly. Why do you give discounts for the ladies? You want to try to get more ladies into the yeah, definitely. club? Definitely. Really? Definitely. But they're separated. Yeah, but they, we have a lounge, we oh, have a coffee okay. shop, we have I get a, you. I get it's you like, now. you know, a ladies okay. night. Okay, <laughs> okay, I get you now. Do you yeah. have a coffee shop inside we as well? We have a coffee shop, yeah. Oh, we have so a, it's like a, a meet and lounge. greet. Yeah, yeah, we do birthdays, we do corporate events, the gatherings for kids. Uh, we have, we put the Champions League and all games. Oh, so it's cool. like a clubhouse. So a club. In Saudi, we're, we're just building our building right now. Okay. So it's an exciting time for the kids. You know, they like to gather, they like to, along That's with so families. Cool. That's yeah, so yeah, so yeah, cool. Yeah. So so do you do you do then like do you do like physiotherapy on site as well or it's a plan. It's a plan. Uh, mm. Physiotherapy, nutrition and, and, and other things we spoke about, we have to incorporate it with time. Definitely. And would that would how would you manage that as a business model? Would you introduce that with a subscription? It can be. Or would you would that be like an extra add-on? Like I'm paying the forty to come show up at your, your yeah. So gym. so the forty the forty is for fitness, but for football is seventy BD a month or okay. one hundred and fifty for term three months. Okay. So an average of fifty BD. So for for our foot for football, you pay uh, for football, and this is how we see it. It's very specialized uh, training. Okay. So my coaches, as I mentioned, from different people uh, places from around the world, they have the right certification. So you'll get proper football training. Okay, this is a two tier system now. Because you have a tier one, which is a 40, which is for general gym hit training, blah, blah, Fitness. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then tier two, or what you designated as football. Football, which is the academy. Which is the academy. Yeah. And there's like classes involved and learning yes. techniques. You have, uh, you have a, a minimum of three classes a week. Sure. An hour and a half each class. Sure. There is a game day. Sure. Where either you play in a league or you play friendly games or you play internally. Uh, the training is divided. Uh, we have non-competitive teams, competitive teams, and then we have the skill days where you develop your skills. We have fitness days when we have the normal training. So, and it goes on with a lot of speciality and private training and all of that. So how many people are we talking about for the for Bahrain? The football? We have around 250. <laughs> In Saudi, we have- Mashallah alaik, Jesus. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. And, and Saudi, we have almost the same. Okay. Uh, of course, we're planning much more than Saudi, but we just started. So in Bahrain, Saudi, you're talking about 500 kids, mm. uh, mm. active members. Mm. In Bahrain, uh, the fitness center, we have around 300 members, mm. ladies and men. Um, so this is what we do. And we have corporate events. We do a lot of corporate events. And for the for the football, uh, for the 70s, sorry, for the football, what is there a specific timeline that, that the training happens or does it happen throughout the day? Like, do you guys only start at four? Like yeah, fitness? definitely. It's okay. outdoors, you know. We, in the summer, we do indoors sure. for the small kids. So we work with schools okay. and we take their gym and we do the training. But definitely from around 4.35, we start our training up to 7.38. Okay. And then we rent the field. So that's okay. another source of income we work with. Uh, so from 7.38 up to 12. 
You're a lot more comfortable now. <laughs> yes, man. That, that, well, this, this is where <laughs> my bread and butter. <laughs> But okay, so so I I mean this is how I do my show mostly because now I get a feel of who you are and it's much more easier than to talk to you and mm-hmm. we have a little bit than decorum. Um, for your seventy for for what you're offering for the two fifty is that is that the part of the application where you do through the application or can anyone join that section? Because you mentioned earlier that that for the under sixteen they can above join above sixteen. Up, yeah, above sixteen. Above sixteen. You're talking about uh, internationally, it's professional level. Okay. Here, it's adults. Okay. So if you're an adult, I cannot teach you the basics of football. It's too late for you. Okay. So if you come and you have the basics, I can support you and put you in a team and give you the opportunity. So the model that we are working on now. Okay. I'm just trying to understand because this is a... a, See, I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 complicated. We're doing a lot of things that is not normal. Sure. You know, we're trying to adapt the... European and, and Western uh, standard, sure. adapting it to our culture and our standard. I still think that if you offer cheerleading classes and doing cheerleading up in front of the shows or band members, like that kind of stuff, that's a good source of it. Definitely, income. definitely. But we need to reach the level now of having proper leagues. Sure, of course, you know? of course. Walk and, before you run. And proper facilities. You don't have enough proper fields to play on. And, and, and I'm just, I, let me just go back so we can correctly understand this. For, for the kids under 16, if they want to do for the football, is it still 70 or is it a discount is it if they're younger? Up to 16 years old, 70, 70. or 150 a term. Sure. If you're above that, yeah, you will pay 35 BD only. Okay. And wh- why do you have it not the reverse way around? Because the majority are the kids. The kids, okay. And I need money. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. Well, I'm just surprised because I would, I would imagine that would be a lot more adults than kids per se. No, definitely no. Okay. Adults, they have the clubs. To, if, they, if they are serious, they sure. will play in a, a proper club. Sure. Now, I have the opportunity to play uh, in, 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 in an official league. Sure. So now, I will attract good players. Sure, 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 sure. But here's the trick. Sure. Now, the good players who are going to play in a club sure. level, you, 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 will, you will pay them. They will not pay you. Sure, 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 sure. And sure, I sure. cannot reach to this stage, so I'm adapting another Straight. model. Yeah. Another model that it's new for here, for this region. region. No, I mean, I get where you're coming from, because the only way to increase profitability, right, is either to cut costs or increase price, right? That's the only two ways, right? So serving kids... Yeah, but you know, we started with uh, the fees of uh, <coughs> 45 BD. Yeah, for, first. for everyone? Or everyone, everyone, when everyone. I started, when I started. But most of my coaches were local, with respect to all local coaches, but the experience was not there. We as an academy were not at the level that I can charge more or, you know, do anything extra. It was normal as everyone. I, the only advantage I had is my facility. I'm mm. the only academy until today in Bahrain that have its own facility mm. and it's a clubhouse. Mm. So when I brought the right coaches, when I developed the right programs, when I upgraded my services, I told them, guys, I cannot charge this much. It's more expensive for me to run the place. So it's your choice. So I jumped to 70 BD. Okay. The, you know, but the majority pay the term, which is 150. Okay. And yeah. and how do you attract parents with kids? What's your marketing? Unfortunately, Bahrain network, okay. personal word of mouth is the easy, easiest way and social media. So you do some social media? Yeah, we do a lot. We're depending on social media. Well, interesting. Yeah. Okay. But Saudi, Saudi, they don't care who you are. Mm. And that's a good thing. Mm. If you're giving, giving me a good service, I will pay you all. I don't care. Yeah. So Saudi is different. Do you change the same prices in Saudi or do you plan to... It's to... cheaper so right now in Saudi because I don't have the right setup. Okay. I don't have the building. Sure. I have fields, proper bigger fields in Bahrain. I have uh, 90% locals in Saudi, Sim- similar how I started here. So sure. the prices are lower, but definitely will, it will increase. Shit, so you're just doing it all over again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, and, uh, but I'm enjoying it. What, what's the highest cost then? The staff or the mention? Staff, man. Staff? staff? Yeah, yeah, salaries. Because I'd imagine that watering all those pitches in those fields can't be exactly cheap. Um, watering? Yeah, because I'm no, guessing no, it's you know, artificial grass. It's artificial grass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you know, you, I was about to say. No, no, no. <laughs> you have to import the soil. <laughs> you have to fucking no, no, do no, the no, whole you thing. You cannot. You cannot. It's too expensive. It's not yeah. worth it. Even even the clubs now shifting to artificial grass. Everyone in the world. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Except, except for the major stadiums, that's different. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay. But training training grounds all over the world, they're shifting to artificial grass. The the, the artificial grass reached a high level of technology now. It's it's almost the same. So with with 300 and something for for mixed gender and 250 for football uh, stage two league, what's your max capacity that you can even hold at this point? In the same time, you mean? Yeah. Well, we reach a big capacity. and We do corporate events. For example, I did for BBK or a different company, GPIC. And sure. We brought a thousand people. Okay. Thousand plus. Wow. Same time. Wow. But I use okay. every single space. You know? Sure, sure, sure. I have sure. a league going on. I have fitness programs up. I have uh, food trucks outside in the sure. parking. I sure. have a walking. Wow, 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 wow. You know, wow. for the sports, yeah, Bahrain yeah, yeah, sports yeah. day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we do stuff like that. So we, we accommodate b- big numbers. In Saudi, I will run the the, fir- the biggest academies league okay. in the Eastern province. Because, it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, because I don't want, I don't know if I should bring this up. Your 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 big, I don't know, competitor, because I don't think you guys are in the same industry. Uh, Athens, no, Spartan gym, I think is the biggest one in Bahrain by square yeah, yeah, foot, yeah, yeah. right? I, I my, could be my, wrong. Pa- my partner uh, trains in Spartan. Okay. My, my partner in business. Yeah. He, he trains in Spartan in the morning, so you go there and. That's why. I'm, so it, because I don't, I don't know how many people can fit in that gym, and that's pretty huge. Mm, uh, yeah, but fit, our fitness center uh, is a side business. Sure. You know, so it's not our major. Business. Oh, is that not your major contributor for your income? It, it's it's a contributor. Sure. It's part of it, definitely. But sure. I, for me personally. Uh, my my partner is more into fitness. Sure, sure, he's sure. He's more sure. into he's properly he's he bodybuilding guy. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He so he's interested in this. So we'll do a show with the three of us at one stage. <laughs> we can talk about bodybuilding. You can talk about football. Exactly. <laughs> so football is my thing, and football where where we generate more money. Sure. So I I don't want to compete with gyms first. First, uh, I do call it first. Uh, first fitness, fitness, fitness first, fitness or whatever it's first, and Spartan and all of these guys, they invest heavy money. I don't have a single machine upstairs. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, I mentioned because it was all hit training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have weights, I have plates, I have dumbbells, I have all of that. Sure. You know, but uh, it's it's a diff- we, we compete with uh, F45. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah something yeah. like that. Sure. So, and, and it's different uh, clientele and all of that. Different models and yeah, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. But, but academies, we compete with a lot of academies in Bahrain. Okay. There are a lot. Have you, have you ever thought about like, uh, I mean, there's nothing wrong saying this. Why am I, why am I pausing? To go to, to go to some of the more expensive schools in Bahrain. We work, would we work with the American school of Bahrain? No, most? no American, to most expensive, to the more high end expensive schools, membership, whatever price, mm-hmm. and seeing if you can buy their email list. We, we work with schools. Sure. So we we train their students. Sure. So we have the contacts and. Oh, okay. And then yeah. would the school then get a cut then from that? Definitely. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, 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 uh, everyone is doing it, like all okay. the academies. And so we we have a, a deal, a, co- a partnership with the American School of Bahrain, the new one. Mm-hmm. Which is the most expensive one? Bahrain okay, right I, now. I don't have kids, so I don't know. They have the biggest facility. They have the best sports facilities in Bahrain. Yeah, uh, a track, running track, uh, two swimming pools, uh, <laughs> name it. So it's really, really good, you know, uh, school. So we do the after school activities there. Does your go- Does your child go there? No, no. Yeah. I thought you're marketing it because you're trying no, to lower no, no. that fees. <laughs> I, I, I cannot. To, to be honest, I cannot afford it. <laughs> it's, it's too expensive. <laughs> yeah. Don't say that. <laughs> I no. thought I thought you're doing like a little bit, you know, to get that <laughs> fee a little lower. To be like, hey, you know what? I talked about no, you on the show. Uh, how how low they can go, you know? <laughs> it's too high. No, but they have a, a very good facility, um, uh, good teachers, good staff. Uh, we work with them a lot, and we work with Bayan School. Mm. You heard about it? Oh. Bahrain Bayan School. Sorry, dude. I'm, I don't yeah. hang out with schools. Yeah, so <laughs> we work with them. It's one of the top schools. We work with the American University of Bahrain. We work with ICANS. Okay. Yeah, we work with a couple of schools in Bahrain. We have a good relationship with them. A lot of their students are our customers. And so how much would that would be your source of your business, would you say? Uh, not much, not much. Really? Yeah, I focus on my core. Really? Uh, academy, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, because I'm, I'm because I, the way I understood your concept is that you have a you have a you have a, a deal running with one of the schools. They send students to you. You know, everyone's happy. You're looking at it like, no, did I misunderstand that? 
So it's different. Every school is dealing with them differently. So sure. if you're running an after school activity, you, you can charge them. I can charge the school as a service. Ah, this is okay. one option. Okay, okay, I get Another you. option is basically the, the parents will pay us, I will give the school a cut. Okay. That's another model. Sure. And there is, so every school, depending on the, the structure of its setup. Yeah, princip- uh, policies, procedures of the school, you will decide and, and the vision of the school, some of the school tell you I, I'm not for profits. I'm not a profit. Uh, sure, sure, for profit for enterprise. Profit enterprise. But I take a lot of fees. Yeah. But, but anyway, <laughs> so I don't want you to uh, pay me anything, but I'll sure. pay you and give me the service. Sure, 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 sure. I, I've always wanted, uh, well, my favorite my favorite request was, somebody once said to me, ah, you know, I've always wanted to get a new nose. <laughs> Yeah. I didn't understand what they were saying. <laughs> it took me like three, it took me like, I remember them saying it and I went home and I was like, what the fuck do they mean by that? <laughs> and then it clicked in my head. I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's different. Everyone yeah. looks at it a different way. Nah, you we know. try to adapt Absolutely. depending on what they, they need. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. I'm, I'm still amazed that, that, so do you grow year by year? Or do you think you've already peaked out with your potential client lists that no, you have? No, no, no. There's huge You're potential. still there's growth? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Domestically, we're talking about. Not yeah, internationally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. So where, where do you... I'm, th- for example, I'm, I'm trying to close a deal now to open my second branch in Bahrain. Oh, shit. Yeah. Okay. From, wh- from which avenue? The fitness avenue or from football, the football? Football, football, football. 100%. The football my focus is football. Uh, well, our expansion is football. Even in Saudi, it's only for... There is no fitness in Saudi. And if you're an instructor, for example, listening right now, and he's big into football... Yeah. How does he get in contact with your firm to be potentially an employee from you guys? Um, our Instagram, he can contact us. So through DMs, it would be the easiest yeah, way. Yeah, DM us and, and I check I check personally uh, the social media. We have our team, but sure. I have access, so I, I check. We, we, we ask anyone to send their CVs on our email. We scan and, and whoever fits. Uh, because see, we get experienced people, but they need to adapt to our way. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah. I have modules. I created, again, nine years of hard work. I'm telling you, I, I, we went to Spain, we went to around the world, and we, when we got there, we sat with the academies and we see how they run their academies. Marset Academy, the one I told you about. I mean, you somehow convinced your wife that you need to go to Spain to, <laughs> to, to learn yeah, about Spain football. Is, uh, I need to uh, convince her for other countries, you know, but Spain, you don't need that. I mean, <laughs> I'm so I'm, I'm amazed. I'm amazed that she let you get away with it. I'm, no, I'm going twice this year, so. Oh my God. Yeah. But now you have an established business. Now, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, blah, blah, yeah, blah. Yeah. But before this whole thing started up, you're like, oh, yeah. Going there to I study. had a meeting in Dubai, you know, for a, a weekend. You there know? we go. <laughs> it's on Friday. I don't know how. But yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, but see, in Spain, for example, when I went to this academy, uh, the, the, the owner of the academy, he took me to the um, uh, coach, coach's. Um, well, I don't know what we call it, uh, area. Or sure, sure, sure. Like lounge, coaches lounge. No, uh, or... office, office, office. Let's say. Okay. So one section, there was the uh, technical coaches. Mm-hmm. Okay, on 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 laptops, and then behind them, the the fitness coaches. What are they doing on laptops? Okay. okay? The fitness coaches. Behind them, the analytics. Okay. Okay. Behind them, uh, the nutritionist. How many people were in that room? Like how many people are we talking about in total? 50, 60. 50, 60 for a group of how many, how many players? No, this academy is 40 sure. years old. Yeah, it's yeah, in the yeah. middle of Barcelona. But they have around, I don't know, maybe a thousand, something like that. They have two, two first, two adults team in, in the league. Sure. One in Catalonia league and one in the fourth so division. Have, so from, if you have a thousand members, that's, that's 10% of, uh, uh, Ten percent of it is that. Like, if you have a thousand members, you require ten percent, as in a hundred people, to manage it. That's incredible. Yeah, but these guys have a hotel. Sure. They have accommodation. They have a school. Sure. Okay. They have. And this is the dream. I'm seeing your eyes light yeah, up. Yeah, exactly. And they have kids from all around the world. As I said, Chinese, Indian, name it. Americans. I was there. Mm. A Canadian family flew all the way from Canada for four days to have a tryout in this academy. So let me ask you this. Do you think it's more likely that a family, if, if you get your, 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 your 
I don't know what the right way, your league, your school, your education, your academy mm. to that international stage. Do you think it's more likely for the parent to rise to Bahrain, to Saudi or to Dubai? Now Dubai. I would say so too. Now Dubai, but in the future Saudi. Because I'm thinking from that parent's perspective, you know, like that Saudi parent you told me about with that shirt from Adidas, Yani, where is he going to go? Yeah. They're going to think that same thing and go, well, you know what? We go to D Dubai, we can enjoy, go to the beach, whatever. Yeah, yeah, but things are changing again. Things are changing. Yeah, this is before, what you got. Before I was, I get in a, in a depression mood when I'm going to Saudi. Now, I can't wait. Mm. Well, okay. now you're married. <laughs> but not Saudi, man. No, no, but my employees in Saudi, unfortunately, I tell, I tell this to my Bahrain employees, by the way. Yeah. Bahrain used to have the best employees. Yeah. Now, I, my Saudi employees are, are better yeah. than the Bahrain employees. Oh, really? Yeah. They have a better mindset. Better work ethic. Better. Yeah. Mm. They're trying. They still have the culture problems, but I mean, the laziness and all of that. But when they're on the field, they give me 1000%. Where do you think that laziness comes from, from our culture, by the way, as a business owner? They have everything, man. What do you mean they have everything? Oh, you mean there's no, there's no struggle? No motive to work. No Just motive to work. Yeah. Yeah. No motive to do anything. Can I, from a business owner to a business owner, let me ask you a serious question, right? How the fuck can you make sure you're hiring the right people? You never, you, you cannot. Never. You just have a, you just have to have a quick turnover. I, I learned something. Uh, hire for attitude, mm. not experience, not uh, certification, whatever. Attitude. If they have the right attitude, if they fit your culture, your work uh, ethics and cultures, they, they, they will succeed. If they not, definitely they, they are not in the right place. I think it's, I think I, I, I learned this from Warren Buffett and I think I learned it way too late was I don't hire based on their qualifications. I don't hire people based on their skill. Both of these things, I can what, skills I can teach, qualifications they can get. What I, what I hire them is how well I can work with them. Yeah. Right? And that took me a long time to get out of that exactly. corporate mentality of, of just... So looking at the CV and... Paper and yeah, yes, no. The first thing, unfortunately, the first thing I look at is th their look. Yeah. If, they, if, if I get someone... Ch sorry, and Sure. I cannot put a, fa a, a coach, a typical unfit coach with a big belly sure on the field sure you know? <laughs> oh come on maybe they're maybe they're italian yeah come and check all my coaches yeah all of them are fit yeah all of them but surely i mean that's my image my, my my brand yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah it's yeah, not yeah. about football it's, it's about, about the brand yeah, i'm yeah, talking yeah. about the brand here it's different this is what i want an attitude if i have a disciplined coach who keeps taking care of his uh image and and physical uh, uh, thing you know then his attitude is that he's in the right place this is one of the boxes that i take if he doesn't care about this part then he's not taking this box okay okay well i mean you're right you're hiring for a very specific reason because i think the world's best coaches are often not very healthy no, no, coaches no. no yeah you have i think i don't think i don't remember the name he was uh, with Chelsea last. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. He smoked yeah. twenty four hours and in between. And he yells a lot and he yeah. swears yeah. and all this kind That's of stuff. That's a different thing. But I'm creating a brand. Mm. I like my brand to look out, look to the people in, the, in, a, in a nice way. Sure. So wherever you're gonna see our coaches wearing winners logo, you'll see a fit coach. So which so reflects in my brand. So for 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 in your own mentality, that means if you're gonna hire an IT guy. You'd want to hire a guy who's overweight and has acne <laughs> because a nerd. you have to hire a nerd, you know? So. Exactly. You're going you're gonna to go with the stereotype, whatever that looks, right? Uh, I mean, marketing wise. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Marketing wise. <laughs> why not? You know, Fuck, you know I love you, it. Use it. Yeah, and use, I, I, this is what, how I, I work, you know? What's, what is the next stage now? Are we looking at hotel? We're looking at ice bath? We're oh, looking yeah. at physiotherapy or we're we looking at everything? Food. Food? No. Not food, nutritionist. No. I tried food. <laughs> no, it's, no, it's nutritionist. A, a whole new, even nutrition. It's 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 a specialty with its own industry. You got burnt, and you're not looking at it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I can partner, yes, but definitely my next plan is to have a, a huge sports complex sure. where it has multiple fields. It has it have uh, uh, eleven aside proper fields. Okay, multiple. Uh, Across, not on top of each other, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay, not indoor, like like a skyscraper. Everything outdoor, 
and a sports uh, hotel mm-hmm. or a motel, something small, يعني. Um, and other like uh, the, the physiotherapy and, and all related um, rehabilitation and all of that related to sports uh, in a complex along with a retail area where where both can serve like a, a healthy restaurants a laundry services so it's a full complex and i already uh, uh, going through some couple of bids with some uh, huge real estate companies in bahrain and in saudi hmm. So this is where we're going. This is what we're and plus opening in every major city in the region plus Egypt. Mashallah, mashallah, mashallah. And and uh, have you have you already made an estimate of what's that going to cost you to build one of these kind of complexes? It depends on, on the on their land. It depends on all in all the, land. the land. Yeah. The, okay. The, the, the above the land, it's sure. clear. Sure. How much it will cost? But but like a million, half a million. The, 2.5 million maybe 2.5 this million. Region, forget this the land range. right hypothetically getting the land for free because which is the, impossible. yeah no the development i mean even if you go into infrastructure that's major money sure depending on the condition of the land this is very detailed now yeah, 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 you yeah, know, yeah. but overall you'll do shells you know and then you can fit it inside so it's not very expensive sure the fields are expensive the hotel is expensive other sure. than that it's It's a piece of cake. And what? How do you think about what would be your aspects of, of sourcing that capital? Would you want to do either uh, some sort of share bid, or would you want to do some sort of shares on returns on an ROI? Or are you open to anything? Open. At, at this stage, I'm open. I'm not okay. very strong right now to to put my. Uh, uh, again, we can. Yeah. We're gonna. Again, we, we, after the footage is edited, you you have it. You can prove it. And we can go back and edit it, and then you have that footage, and you can edit it the way you like it, or yeah. you can tell us, hey, you know what? Can you edit it for just for investors? So I have this like yeah. segmented bit. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. I'm trying to produce content for you, son. <laughs> Fuck it out. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Now now I'm open for anything. Okay. Anything, 100. So in the future, depending on the situation. We'll have to put the terms. Sure. Uh, you know. So, But, so um, if you're investor early right now, you can still purchase uh, percentages, right? Ownership. I'm yeah, guessing. Yeah. But I think later investors. I think the best way now is JVs, mm-hmm. you know, and specific projects. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, so if, if an investor have a piece of land, and and he comes in with the piece of land, we bring other investors to invest in this project. It will have nothing to do with our other facilities and other. Issues that we're facing, sort of like a hotel, how it's run, because the o- land is is owned by someone yeah, else. Yeah, built hotel to operate, and rent. you know, so there is a lot of models that sure. we can work it out. It depends, and and the return is is almost I wouldn't want to say guaranteed, but almost guaranteed because it's proven. We have the brand, we have the capacity, we have the na- the the customer base, uh, and there is a need, a huge need. Mm. Uh, the governments of the GCC are pushing to this industry. And the nice thing about this industry is, if you combine, as we said earlier, sports entertainment, add to this hospitality, mm. you're you know? gonna kill it. You're yeah. gonna kill it. Yeah, because the team will not come. Football teams will not come with two or three players. They're gonna come minimum of, of 22, 15 players with staff. With so, you, so do you see in the next? So do you see hypothetically? That next time, like Bahrain is playing Kuwait or Bahrain is playing Saudi Arabia, whatever, and the foreign team comes in, do you see it that you're that they're going to be staying at your hotel and hopefully at your pitch? Hopefully, keep, keep these people out. Really, I, I already I already bring academies and clubs and sure. teams coming to Bahrain. Oh wow! I'm doing this right now and okay. I'm putting them in different hotels. Okay. So we can do our own leagues. We can do our international. Uh, you know, we can people can come here and do their camps. Hmm. Already, I'm bringing the. Top international coaches here, mm. you know. Do you, so. do, you, do you have an investor document, like a cold pitch, like a sales pitch? Kind of. We, we, I, as I said, we, I just brought in some investors, so sure. I already went through the first the first, f- the first round of finance. First round of finance. I have now uh, three, four, f- four, four board members. Mm-hmm. You know, three, two from Saudi and two from Bahrain. Mm-hmm. Other than me and my partner, the establishers. So we did this. We evaluated the company, but it was on only two or three branches. Sure. So it wasn't on the big picture. Sure. Now we're talking a different story. I agree. So that's what I'm yeah. saying. If you can share with me the cold document of, of I need what to, you're, it's not ready, but I need. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your yeah. sales pitch, right? I yeah. mean, the publicly releasable document, yeah, yeah, obviously, yeah. right? And I can share it all across to some VCs that I know from Riyadh, and I, I think it's an interesting business model. 
Yeah. Um, I think there's definitely for your second round of finances and you're going to, I think you're going to be burning through cash at the construction stage, mm. which I think is fair to say, right? Yeah. hundred yeah, percent. And a higher, higher level of talent is also going to yeah. cost you and sourcing that talent. It's is just also the establishment. I think it will really, uh, need the big investment and then the rest is, is not a big issue, but the, 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 the build, the building, the infrastructure, all of that is really, really need heavy money. Mm. After that, the operations, it, it, it's uh, it's gradual growth, sure. uh, natural growth. Sure. You know, so it's slow. It's organic. It's yeah. organic, slow, and then you're gonna employ little by little. So you'll, you'll not staff it. This is our part where we go. And and what would you what would you be looking for from the aspect of of your share, of a potential investor? Would you want them? Is it just pure capital you're looking for? Or are no, you looking for it's more of a strategic. Yeah, partners, strategic partners. Definitely. Okay. Definitely. Okay. You need doors to be open. You need. Yeah. It is what it is. That's that's everywhere in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's it's fascinating business model. And what kind of ROI would you be looking at year by year? Eight to ten. Eight to ten. That's ambitious. We're already doing this. Okay. Wow. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And I, I think that I think. Do you think you're going to keep the seventy BD model for 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 long term, or do you think there's there's no, margins uh, to increase? Then it, it will change. Things yeah. will change. Think it's gonna go up or you think it's gonna go down? Uh, it depends. I think it depends on the country we're operating in and the city and the service that we're providing, you know? Sure. I think I think honestly, 70 BD, I don't think it's it's too far off, too far out of reach. I think there is some more some market, some margin to go a little mm -hmm. higher. I don't know where that break even point is. Where where are you gonna start losing? So, some some are charging higher already and other academies. So, sure. Yeah. So it's doable. Absolutely. Well, let me know. How would people reach out to you, both from investors, potential students, anything else? Well, you have my Instagram. Sure. How you Can reach you put me? their Instagram on, Dan? Yeah. F.albinmohammed. Wonderful. Yeah.